for seven decades, WEEK has been on the air, keeping you informed about what's going on throughout central Illinois. Tell us about this, Jackie. Got here, some Tyler. retro lab coats here. You know, it's an ongoing process. It was an experiment back in 1953. <laughs> seven years later, we're going strong, and Jessica Cook had a chance to talk to the legends who helped shape this station into what it is today. A newscast in the 1950s was a lot different than what you see today. This is how you watch the news. A black and white TV, no high definition flat screens, digital technology, cell phones, or live reports. Two months into 1953, WEEK TV went on the air for the first time. Bob Arthur, the first news anchor, welcomed into homes throughout central Illinois. Joined by Francis Dale Hearn, known as Chick in sports, and hometown favorite Bill Houlihan for weather. When WEEK TV began broadcasting, the talent weren't the only people in the studio. Tom Hexamer was hired as a floor director and artist in the early 60s. We would have maybe 10 to 13 live commercials during a half hour newscast. It'd be an automobile that we'd pull into the studio and pull that out. And while the news was on, we'd set up lawn furniture for Cohen Furniture Company. Many moving parts, a variety of sets, and no zoom function on large heavy cameras meant a lot of physical demands. Hexamer says going from black and white to color was a whole new ball game. Some of the things that we found out, red for example, was a very low frequency color. So the red gun on the camera would wear out quicker. Do you think we have anything good to eat today? Well, let's find out. A few things longtime viewers remember from the 70s. The Captain Jinx show with Sam Longergan and George Basilian as Salty Sam and the live broadcasting of Bradley basketball games, not to mention live newscast from the Heart of Illinois Fair and even one from Northwoods Mall in Peoria for the grand opening. We put a window so people at the mall could actually, actually see us doing the news. Reporters had to have their stories done by 8.30 to make the deadline for the 10 p.m. news. That was because staff was using 16-millimeter film. Gary Ebeling was here from June 1971 to late 1980. He remembers looking at the film on a projector, telling the engineer what he wanted. Reporters and producers using typewriters to get their work done. And you had to pause before you started talking because there was a lag between where the audio was recorded on the magnetic stripe and where the film was in the lens of the camera. And so I got a memo from Tom Connor in June of 1971 saying, remember to pause before you start doing your, your interview. Uh, that was all, those were all things that film made more challenging. Eventually, tape replaced film. Ebling remembers covering governors, labor UAW strikes, and the invasion of St. Cecilia Grade School in Peoria. Three men had robbed a sporting goods store on Southwest Adams and eventually went into the school behind Peoria High. Many people listening on the radio that day. It was a frightening day for so many people. Police then gunned down the, the uh, gunman, Melvin Birch, and the boy was free and not harmed. No students were harmed. But I remember our photographer, Stan Anderson, was so close to the scene, he was actually pinned down in his car and couldn't get out to film it. Without cell phones, staff had to rely on each other to get information out to the viewers. It was hard to get the our two-way radio going. You know, I'd have to walk pretty far to get to that. And uh, so a friend of mine had a great big old phone and he brought it to me at the scene so that I could call the station and they could tell me what was going on. So at least I, I could be updated on the story because otherwise I'm just sitting out there and many times I was just a sitting duck. Christine Zach Edmonds has called Peoria home since 1978. She was a reporter and anchor for more than 20 years. Whatever it was, we were a part of that and, and that was very important to me and that made me really part of the community because I was doing that service. Zach Edmonds was part of the St. Jude Telethon for many years, helping raise millions of dollars for the organization. We didn't want the newscast to be so formal. And that's a voice you probably know. Gary Moore moving to WEEK-TV as a reporter and weekend anchor after a change in the radio industry. 
He went on to have a 30-year career at the station, launching the first morning newscast in the market. It was 30 minutes, 6.30 to 7. We did a lot of research as to who is up at that time and what can we do to um, give them information specifically that they would need. And then generally, um, the rest of the news and information. Every Friday, they would go on location somewhere, and with the morning newscast gaining popularity, it quickly became what you know today, two and a half hours. To the viewers, they should feel good about having a station that is and has always been committed to excellence. It was a pleasure for me to, to be there. In the late 90s, the 25 News Team came to be known as your home team. Today, offering you more than 50 hours of local news a week on NBC and ABC, proudly serving Central Illinois. For 25 News, I'm Jessica Cook.